Good evening. My name is Helen Picard. I'm chair of the North Andover Public uh, School Committee. Um, it is 7.01 on the 10th of June, 2021, and I am calling this meeting to order. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, to, and the to the Republic for which it, for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, indivisible, indivisible with, with liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Thank you. I would remind everyone that this meeting is being recorded um, and you should silence your phones and other devices. Um, and I'm going to read the governor's order. Um, this meeting is being recorded pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law and the governor's March 12, 15th, 2020 order imposing a strict limitation on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the North Andover School Committee may be conducted via remote participation by some or all committee members and staff. Specific information on the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with a right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the town's website at www.northandovermma.gov. For this meeting, members of the public who wish to hear the meeting may do so on their televisions by tuning to Comcast Channel 99 or Verizon Channel 28 or online at northandovercam.org. No in-person attendance of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access the, pre the proceedings <clears throat> in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite our best efforts, we will post on the Sewell Department website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of the proceedings. Um, again, please silence your devices. So, uh, because they are, um, because we're doing it this way, we need to do everything by roll call vote, um, and we'll start with a roll call so we can make sure we um, have the names of everyone who is um, present um, in the record. So when I call your name, <clears throat> please respond in the affirmative. Ms. Vitsky Lynch. Here. Ms. Petrowski. Here. Mr. McDevitt. Here. Ms. Mabley. Here. And I'm going to turn it to Dr. Gilligan to call the folks on his team. Dr. Mealy. Here. Ms. Marks. Here. Ms. Bacuzzi. Here. And student representative Ethan. I'm here. And I don't believe Lin Lindsay's not joining us tonight, right, Ethan? I don't think so. All right. Okay, so that's everybody. Um, our first order of business is public comment. And we have none tonight, just verifying. We have no public comment tonight. And so our next agenda item is consent agenda, approval of minutes from May 20th. So I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes as printed in the packet. So moved. Second. So moved by Ms. Mabley, seconded by Ms. Vitsky Lynch. And any discussion? No? Okay, so we'll do a roll call vote and we'll start with Ms. Vitsky Lynch. Yes. Ms. Petrowski. Yes. Mr. McDevitt. Yes. Ms. Mabley. Yes. And the chair votes yes, so that carries 5 0. And we're on to the student report. Ethan. Thank you very much. The Drama Guild is holding their last big show of the year, Plaza Suite. Uh, they're filming it this weekend, and they plan to release it on their social media soon afterwards uh, with two acts, uh, with two separate casts. At the school, as of now, things are very much winding down. Students who are taking AP classes in the fall are receiving their AP summer work, but other than that, final assignments are being finished up. In addition, uh, the students who are receiving their vaccinations through the school are going to be receiving their second dose during the school day tomorrow, so good luck to them the day after. <laughs> uh, also, the junior prom is being held next Wednesday night. Uh, that will be before the last day of school, which is, of course, next Thursday, the 17th. Uh, to add on, uh, the freshman and sophomore classes have wrapped up taking MCAS, which they have been taking uh, all week so far. Uh, the student council was able to hold a few events to entertain the juniors during that time, and as a student council member, I hope people enjoyed it. In addition, freshman and sophomore classes are holding their class officer elections. Uh, the current class officers for the 2020-2021 school year 
are wrapping up their current terms and we are electing new 2021-2022 class officers for the class of 2023 and the class of 2024. To add on, the North Andover High School Gay Straight Alliance has begun celebrating Pride Month this June uh, and have been making announcements on the history of being LGBTQ plus in America uh, for the past couple of weeks. Uh, the final item I have on the list tonight is that the boys volleyball, ba uh, varsity and JV baseball, varsity and JV softball uh, teams are all having games in Chelmsford and both the boys and girls tennis teams are having games in Tewksbury. Uh, so good luck to all of them tonight. That is all I have for the report tonight. Thank you. Uh, does anyone have any questions? So we'll have a go around. Ms. Vitsky Lynch. No questions. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Parshalski. No questions. Thank you. Uh, Mr. McDevitt? Uh, no questions. Thank you, Ethan. Uh, great report again. And Ms. Mabley? I'm all set. Very thorough. I appreciate it. And thanks for uh, riding solo for the first time. Well done. Agreed. Agreed. Thank you so much. And we do not expect any student report next week. Um, it will be the 17th at 7 o'clock, and you all will have completed your school year. So um, take the summer off, and we'll see you again in September. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ethan. Thank you, Bye -bye. Ethan. Um, you're welcome to stay, but you're also welcome to go. Okay, so our next agenda item is the superintendent's report, and I'll turn to Dr. Gilligan. Thank you, Ms. Picard. Um, Ethan, well done. He hit a couple highlights. Um, June 17th is the last day of school, so that is next Thursday, and it's a half day. Um, very exciting for a lot of people. Um, 1,400 kids have been vaccinated in the district, just roughly around uh, at this point, um, received the they are uh, totally vaccinated or at least received their first shot. And as Ethan mentioned, there'll be more tomorrow. Um, just recently, I wanted to let you know that Jeff Riley sent a notice uh, to superintendents on an update in May uh, with information about the fall as of now. And so the commissioner of education at DESE said for the fall districts and schools will be required to be in person full time, five days a week. And all DESE health and safety requirements will be lifted. This includes dis physical distancing requirements. They will continue to collaborate all summer with DPH uh, and public school districts if there are any safety recommendations that they'll make for the fall. Uh, and we will probably hear from them later this summer if there are any additional recommendations or restrictions um, or other safety requirements. Um, uh, can I just ask a brief question around that? Yep. Ms. Picard? Yes, okay, I just, does that include bus usage as well, as far as you know? Yeah, so uh, what they're saying is all safety requirements will be lifted. So, so that's uh, excellent. At okay. this time, you know, that's what it appears. Thank you. Um, and then and was, I'm sorry, Dr. Gilligan, was there anything about masks? Um, w you know, that's interesting you asked that because, uh, you know, when I first read this document, I thought that it had made a suggestion about masks. Um, mm -hmm. But what it did say is um, they'll continue to work with DPH uh, or on the health and safety requirements over the summer. And they put, for example, masks for elementary school students um, in, quote, you know, in parentheses, and they'll give you an update. So I don't, I'm not sure at this time they're suggesting that it would be masks. I think that was an example. Um, but I do know um, that across the state, superintendents are talking about, oh, have you heard that it could be masks for elementary? And I think that's an example, and you know, hopefully we'll hear more from them. Absolutely. Uh, Thank you. And then last but not least um, in my update tonight is... Uh, we had graduation last week, and I think it was really uh, a beautiful ceremony. I was so happy for our seniors and their families and loved ones. Um, we weren't sure all the way up until almost 2 o'clock on the deadline about the weather, uh, but it cooperated somehow. And um, it was just a, a tremendous ceremony, and uh, I'm really happy for the kids. And anyone that would like to watch it, you can go to NACAM, and they have it, and it's also um, you know, through NACAM on YouTube. Uh, and you know the high school site, etc. So, uh, awesome, awesome event, and congratulations to the class of 2021. And that's all tonight. Thank you, Dr. Gilligan. Thank you. Um, so we are on to the next agenda item, which is the chair's report. Um, and I just want to um, confirm with the committee that our summer retreat will be on July 27th from eight in the morning until noontime. Um, we are contracting with a consultant um, who's gonna work with us on communication and training on team building. So that should be um, a fun experience since we haven't been um, 
quite as we had been <laughs> for quite a while. So it'll be it'll be exciting to do that. So July 27 was the date that all members were available to come, as well as the administrative team. Um, tonight we're going to have the superintendent's um, evidence for his final evaluation. Um, the evaluation form will come to us um, from Ms. Zagari either tonight or tomorrow morning, and we have a quick turnaround on that. Um, we'll want to get that form done and um, sent back to Ms. Zagari um, by Tuesday the 15th uh, because our next meeting is on the 17th. Normally, we would have two weeks for that, but when we scheduled the um, school committee meetings for June, we, um, we had planned to be on June 3rd, which was graduation week. So we ended up shifting to this week and then we're meeting again next week and then we're done for the summer. So I, I apologize that that's a quick turnaround. Um, some of you are old hat at this and can probably do it pretty quickly, um, but do um, let me know um, if you have any difficulties with that. We will attach that to our agenda for um, next week and that will be posted on Tuesday. Um, we can do the link a little bit later if we need to, but I want to make sure Ms. Zagari has some time um, to pull together um, what we submit as she does for us um, every year. Um, and then the third thing is um, open meeting law um, is scheduled to expire on the, the provisions, um, the suspension of certain provisions of the open meeting law that we read at the beginning of every meeting um, are scheduled to expire on June 15th. Um, and our next meeting is scheduled for June 17th. Um, the governor had asked for some legislation to extend that. So um, between now and uh, Tuesday of next week, we should know um, they were scheduled to vote on that today and I did not hear the results. So we will either um, continue as we have um, through this year um, for the final meeting of the year, or um, if we are going to be meeting fully in person, we will probably move the meeting over to the high school auditorium. And we will let you know that just to, to give you notice on that. Does anybody have any questions, comments, or concerns about those things? Hearing none, we'll move right along to old business. Um, and we have the second reading and approval, um, actually the third reading at this point, of the uh, recovery services budget, the separately uh, budgeted recovery services plan. Dr. Gilligan. Yeah, so this is the, um, the third meeting on this uh, recovery plan. And um, we're really excited to continue to work with the town manager and the town and be able to make a difference for our kids, build capacity, uh, and make the biggest impact on the populations that are you know, most impacted by COVID-19 um, moving forward. And we believe this does that exactly. Um, so we're looking forward to uh, tonight and town meeting next Tuesday. All right. so. We had left off um, last week. We decided, or yeah, last week. No, two three weeks, weeks ago. ago. The 20th, three weeks ago, a long time ago. We had left off um, and folks wanted a little bit more time to process the information um, and ask any questions that they had. So I wonder if um, anybody has anything that they want to bring up to the committee at this time. Okay, so um, what I would do at this point, I heard no one speak up, so I would entertain a motion um, to approve the separately funded, uh, separately budgeted recovery services. How is this written? So, uh, I'll make a motion to approve um, the 2021-2022 uh, recovery services budget as presented um, in the packet for $2,590,500. So I think that was moved by Ms. Mabley and seconded by Ms. Petrowski? Correct. Okay, and now we'll have discussion and I'll go through um, as we usually do and I'll start with Ms. Visky lunch Lynch. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I think last meeting there was some question about the positions that would only be for one year. So do we have an answer to that? Yeah, so the following year we ask uh, in the long-term plan, as you know, we put together the long-term plan last year uh, and adjusted it for this year. But in the following year, we asked for 4.56%, which is about $848,000. Um, and in those positions, um, they are uh, an e EL uh, 
four special education, uh, two special education teachers and uh, the, the out of district funds, which is about the equivalent of four special education teachers. We had, um, so in these positions, we'd be looking at keeping um, special education, social worker, um, reading, and um, as well as we had an administrative position for assistant principal um, and for assistant special education director, it would be keeping the math uh, director as well. So uh, roughly, Ms. Um, Ms. Vitsky Lynch, probably about, we have the ability to keep about half of these, um, but that's also as we move forward too, what other additional opportunities come forward to be able to continue to keep these on. And we feel confident that we're getting the additional funds after, right, the federal funds? Yeah, I mean, we know SR2 is coming mm -hmm. um, after June, July 30, uh, and then SR3, and that's, you know, 1.2 million, and then, uh, is it Jim? I think it's 2.2, 2.8. 2.8. 2.8 in SR3. So I think we'll have the ability not only to do that, but to be able to, um, you know, supplement that and continue to make a difference and keep these even on longer. It's, it's distinctly possible that uh, some of these positions continue through the grant funds as well. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll have the additional operating funds to bring on positions and then the uh, grant money that can carry over into the next year, which we anticipate the need for further recovery services. So it's distinctly possible that a lot of these positions will continue either through the operating budget, a combination of operating budget and grant funds for two years, and then you've got the next operating budget increase. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of these positions will continue. Okay. That's Thank you, Ms. Lynch. Anything mm -hmm. else? Uh, not for right now. Okay. Ms. Petrowski. Um, I don't think I have any questions right now, actually, because we had talked about this last time. Okay. Um, Mr. McDevitt? Um, so, uh, sorry, it sounds like an echo. Is that? It's echoing for me, too. You guys sound good here. <laughs> yep. Okay, all right, so maybe it's just those that are remote. Um, I, I'm glad to hear Dr. Gillian the positions that are gonna be funded and continue on with those. So thank you very much for the update of that. Um, I, I remain a little bit concerned about, you know, some investments that we could be making in, um, you know, programs and, and develops a, the, um, developmental opportunities that might be remaining and uh, have an opportunity to just be a foundation that we can build upon. Um, but uh, at, at this point, I don't think I have any other questions. Thank you, Mr. Thank McDevitt. Thank you, Mr. McDevitt. And Ms. Mabley. Um, I actually was seeing it the opposite way a little bit that I feel like we're, we're getting some of these positions that we want in our long range plan like almost a little bit earlier. So I, f I, I feel actually excited in the other direction that I feel like we're getting a, a jump start in a couple cases. So um, I remain um, impressed with all the work you've done and I'm excited to, uh, I mean, it's, it's obviously there's gonna be a lot to, to be done and it's not like we're just gonna pick up where we left off, but um, I think we're gonna have a lot of good people in place, so especially if we're getting some good candidates. So um, I'm excited. Thank you, Ms. Mabley. Um, and I too appreciate the, the update on um, thinking about ESSER 2 and ESSER 3 um, and how we might be able to move forward. And we are expecting that students may have recovery needs over a, over a period of time. It, you know, it's not gonna be instant recovery. We're really gonna have to work um, with especially data identified students um, who really need that kind of support. So I appreciate um, all the data work that's been done as well as all the financial work and um, I particularly appreciate the support of the, our town manager um, in looking for how we can best um, fund and serve our students. So I am um, ready to have us vote by roll call unless there's anything else we need to add. Hearing nothing, I'm gonna go ahead with a roll call vote. Uh, Ms. Vitsky lynch Yes. Ms. Petrowski. Yes. Mr. McDevitt. Yes. Ms. Mabley? Yes. And the chair votes yes. So the motion carries 5-0. Um, and everything else under old business was in support of that one item. So we're on to new business. Um, and this is the MAS, excuse me, MSBA submission. 
And um, these need to be read virtually into the record um, e exactly how they're printed in the or linked to the agenda. Oh, that's Usually right. Mr. McDevitt is, I was just say the same is our reader, but I think given that he is remote tonight, I will ask if there, yeah. do you want to I, do I it? Actually, well, no, I don't be, because it would be really hard for me to read and see it, but I was thinking I have read them in the past and we have not been successful. <laughs> <laughs> thinking that, you know, maybe someone else would do it and then, you know, we, we could get it. I am, um, I'm going to ask perhaps that our, our newest member, um, who oh, is an gosh. EL teacher, <laughs> might be able to be our reader tonight. Great. Would you be willing to do that for us, Ms. Petrowski? We can split them up, too. Sure, I can do that. We could yeah, split them fine. up, but we'll start with, um, <clears throat> with letter A, the first reading, and I think we have to do these um, one by one. So I think okay. what you need to do is say, um, I move that we, and then you read the whole thing, and then we get a second, and then there's discussion and vote. I move that the committee consider. Is that what? Yeah, and then blah, blah, blah. Yeah, go ahead. Explain for anybody at home yes. wondering why we're doing this, and maybe some new school committee members who are <laughs> wondering. So the MSBA requires this so that the community understands that in submitting the application, um, there the MSBA is not obligated to, to um, are not promising anything um, <laughs> if selected, that you have to understand that the community does not have an obligation, um, that we are submitting the application, but you can withdraw it at any time. Even if chosen, you don't have to um, select. So it's just a, an understanding that um, the, the town is behind this and that there are things in motion to um, make these projects happen so that it's, you know, the town is serious about these projects. That's what we're saying tonight with each one. But they do have to be read individually <laughs> and completely. Okay. So what, what's, what, what do I say I moved, first? I move that and then you read it all. Okay. That the committee consider. Right? I move that the committee consider uh, item one, the first, is that where I'm starting? Right there? First reading, resubmission of the MSBA oh, statement. This is a first reading. Why, what are we moving? I don't know. I'm just doing Oh, no, good a point. I'm so sorry. So, Jim, this is, this is the first reading. Yeah, that's what I'm first saying. Reading, said. Good call. Um, we, it, officially, it has to be read as the motion that's approved. And that's next so week. Since it's the first okay. reading, that conversation we just had is sufficient for a first reading. Yeah. So people understand what it is, and if somebody had any questions or comments, they could make That's them right. in the course between now yeah. and the next meeting. So you're off the hook. You can <laughs> practice for next week. You can practice, yeah. you can practice for next week, Ms. Petrowski. <laughs> that is what I'll do. <laughs> well, Andrew, would be that. just a quick question. Go ahead, Andrew. So, so in the past, Jim, we've had to have this um, done and submitted by a certain date. <laughs> um, what is the date this year? And if it's in the document, I apologize. I can't. See a um, it's not so it's dated the 18th because that's before the deadline. Um, the 25th is the deadline this year. They extended it, not surprisingly, because of COVID. Sure. So our approval will happen on the 17th, and select board will approve on the 15th. Uh, so those will both be in time for the application submission. So, so the reason why I ask that is, does it make sense? And I'm never usually a fan of suspending the rules, but does it make sense for us to do this before the select board? Um, and I mean, there's no penalty to trying to do this, right? I mean, no, I would say um, backtracking to have taken uh, anyone off the hook that pre preferably we would be, the uh, school committee would be before the select board. Um, so if you're not adverse to, uh, in given this agenda tonight, it probably would be a good time to do something like this. Um, yeah, so if you're not adverse to suspending the rules, that probably is a good idea. So the chair is not adverse to suspending the rules. Is there any member who would be adverse to that? Okay, but before we do all that, um, Jim, there is a difference here this year. Um, 
in the, the prior years, we were only doing NAMS. We've added Atkinson, Franklin, and Kittredge. And I was anticipating that we were gonna have the motion and then the discussion uh, and then the vote, which I, cause I forgot we were doing first reading. But um, because we have to take these all separately, I think it would help the committee and the community to understand um, what's going on with the three elementary schools. We have not completed yet the, um, the school capacity subcommittee recommendation and that vote and all that other stuff. Can you just fill us in a little bit on why we're doing um, the MSBA now for those three other schools as well? Yes, so the middle school, as a lot of people know, has been applied for, for three years now. This will be the fourth because we, we identified overcrowding at the middle school. At the same time, elementary schools, Franklin, Kittredge, and Atkinson were identified as uh, in need of renovations because of their age and in aging infrastructure and um, code deficiencies that need to be brought back up to modern code um, and our ability to impact class size, which we've, we can't impact it anymore, but we still want to. And so those three schools had been identified as part of um, school projects needed to get done, but they were put off from facilities master plan phase one and moved to phase two. Well, now phase two is coming forward this, this coming year. So in September, the facilities master plan committee will get together and recommend the projects, including school projects, that will go to town meeting in May of 2022. So th that's why the timing is, now we might as well cover our bases that if we apply for these projects which we're moving forward or recommending move forward as part of the plan then we should submit the applications uh, with the possibility that they could be funded by msba so that's why they're going forward right now and is there any um, hierarchy between those um, between those four schools you have to prioritize uh, when you submit more than one project. If you're only doing one, it's obviously the top priority. But when you're doing more than one, you have to give them a priority. Um, and the recommendation in speaking with our MSBA contact is that you put forward, again, I, I used this expression before, you put your worst foot forward. So in our case, uh, Kittredge is our oldest school, the one in need of um, the, the most renovations. Uh, and so we will put Kittredge is the number one priority in the other two elementary schools uh, and in the middle school because where they're, there's no guarantee that they could be kind of grouped, but where they're addressing the same issue, which is class size uh, in the you know, code deficiencies, they could be grouped. So we wanna give us ourselves our best chance to get the most funding we can. Thank you, Dr. Mealy. Um, does anybody have questions before we start our marathon of reading? Um, these resolutions so just to confirm if you don't mind um, madam chair that basically the order you have them here a through D is not the order in which you intend to submit them however correct and that this doesn't is, matter okay it, no that doesn't matter okay. how, how what order we do this in fine okay thank you any other questions okay so um, so we're gonna come back to you Ms. Petrowski <laughs> and um, where you're gonna read you start um, I move, it's after the recommended action, first reading, no action required. So it's the paragraph after that, you're gonna say, I move. Okay. But before you do that, you need to go down to the following paragraph where it says resolved, having convened an open meeting on June 17th, um, you need to strike 17 and say uh, June 10th. Aren't you clever? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Got it. Um, and then, well, we have to make a mo we have to make a motion first to suspend the, the rules. Yep. Correct. Right. Yep. Um, and then authorized to submit the form dated June 18th. Is that all okay, um, Dr. Mealy? The June 18th date. That the that is the date that will be on the application. Yes. Okay. All right. So I would entertain a motion to suspend the rules um, for new business A, B, C, and D. So I think moved. we can take those all together. Yes. And so I moved. think that was moved by Ms. Lynch. Yes. Second. Second. Oh, Mr. McDevitt. Seconded by Mr. McDevitt. Um, he raised his further, hand too. <laughs> any further discussion on the um, suspension of the rules? 
Hearing none, roll call vote. Ms. Vitsky Lynch. Yes. Ms. Petrowski. Yes. Ms. Dura McDevitt. Yes. Ms. Mabley. Yes. And the chair votes yes. So we have suspended the rules for new business A, B, C, and D, um, the MSBA submissions for NAMS, Atkinson, Franklin, and Kittredge. And now we begin our marathon. Um, I would um, entertain a motion. Oh, that's me, right? Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So this, okay, I get it. All right. I move that the committee consider the resubmission of the SOI statement of interest which is the first critical step in the Massachusetts School Building Authorities Program to partially fund the construction, renovation, addition, or repair of municipal yep, owned school facility for the North Andover Middle School. <coughs> Resolved. Having convened in an open meeting on June 10th prior to the SOI submission closing date, the School Committee of North Andover, in accordance with its charter bylaws and ordinances, has voted to authorize the superintendent to submit to the Massachusetts School Building Authority the statement of interest form dated June 18th, 2021 for the North Andover Middle School located at 495 Main Street, North Andover, which describes and explains the following deficiencies in the priority categories for which an application may be submitted to the Massachusetts School Building Authority in the future. Priority two. Elimination of existing severe overcrowding as determined in the judgment of the authority specifically to decrease class sizes. And priority seven, replacement of or addition to obsolete buildings in order to provide for the full range of programs consistent with state and approved local requirements, specifically to provide educational spaces that meet the needs of our students and hereby further specifically acknowledges that by submitting this statement of interest form, the Massachusetts School Building Authority in no way guarantees that the acceptance or the approval of an application, the awarding of a grant, or any other funding commitment from the Massachusetts School Building Authority or commits to the city or town or regional school districts to filing an application for funding with the Massachusetts School Building Authority. Second. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Moved by Ms. Petrowski, seconded by Ms. Mabley. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we have a roll call vote starting with Ms. Vitsky Lynch. Yes. Ms. Petrowski. Sure, yes. <laughs> Mr. McDevitt. Yes. Ms. Mabley. Yes. And the chair votes yes, so that carries 5 0 for um, NAMS. And now we have. Uh, New business B for Atkinson. Ms. Petrowski, you want to try again, or is there somebody else in the room that wants to? I'll, I'll do it. I'll take. Holly will take do a it. turn. Great. I move that the committee consider the submission of a statement of interest, which is the critical first step in the Massachusetts School Building Authority's program to partially fund the construction, renovation, addition, or repair of municipally owned school facility for the Atkinson Elementary School. Resolved, having convened in an open meeting on June 10th, 2021, prior to the SOI submission closing date, the School Committee of North Andover, in accordance with its charter, bylaws, and ordinances, has voted to authorize the superintendent to submit to the Massachusetts School Building Authority the statement of interest form dated June 18th, 2021, for the Atkinson Elementary School located at 111 Phillips Brooks Road, North Andover, which describes and explains the following deficiencies and priority categories for which an application may be submitted to the Massachusetts School Building Authority in the future. Priority two, elimination of existing severe overcrowding as determined in the judgment of the authority, specifically to decrease class size. And priority seven, replacement of or addition to obsolete buildings in order to provide for a full range of programs consistent with state and approved local requirements, specifically to provide educational spaces that meet the needs of our students. And hereby further spe specifically acknowledges that by submitting this statement of interest form, the Massachusetts School Building Authority in no way guarantees the acceptance or the approval of an application, the awarding of a grant or any other funding commitment from the Massachusetts School Building Authority or commits the city, town, regional school district to filing an application for funding with the Massachusetts School Building Authority. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Moved by Ms. Lynch, seconded by Ms. Mabley. Yes. Okay. And any discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Ms. Vitsky Lynch. Yes. <laughs> Ms. Petrowski. Yes. Ms. Mabley. Yes. Mr. McDevitt. Yes. 
and the chair votes yes, so that carries 5-0. And we are on to new business C regarding the MSB, MSBA um, on the Franklin School. Who's up? I will go. Um, Excellent. Ms. Mabley. Madam Chair, I move that the committee consider the submission of a statement of interest, which is the critical first step in the Massachusetts School Building Authority's program to partially fund the construction, renovation, addition, or repair of municipally owned school facility for the Franklin Elementary School. Resolved. Having convened in an open meeting on June 10, 2021, prior to the SOI submission closing date, the School Committee of North Andover, in accordance with its charter, bylaws and ordinances has voted to authorize the superintendent to submit to the Massachusetts School Building Authority the statement of interest form dated June 18th, 2021 for the Franklin Elementary School located at 2 Cypress Terrace, North Andover, which describes and explains the following deficiencies and the priority categories for which an application may be submitted to the Massachusetts School Building Authority in the future. Priority two. Limita elimination of existing severe overcrowding as determined in the judgment of the authority specifically to decrease class size and priority seven replacement of or addition to obsolete buildings in order to provide a full range of programs consistent with state and approved local requirements specifically to provide educational spaces that meet the needs of our students and hereby further specifically acknowledges that by submitting this statement of interest form the Massachusetts School Building Authority in no way guarantees the acceptance or the approval of an application, the awarding of a grant, or any other funding commitment from the Massachusetts School Building Authority, or commits the city, town, or regional school district to filing an application for funding with the Massachusetts School Building Authority. Second. So moved by Ms. Mabley, seconded by Ms. Lynch. Assuming no discussion, We'll have a roll call vote with Ms. Bitsky Lynch starting. Yes. And Ms. Petrowski? Yes. Mr. McDevitt? Yes. Ms. Mabley? Yes. And the chair votes yes. So again, 5 0 carries um, for Franklin MSBA submission. And we're on letter D um, with regards to the Kittredge School. Who's up? I guess that's me. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> okay. I move that the committee consider. The submission of the statement of interest, which is a critical first step in the Massachusetts School Building Authority program to partially fund the construction, renovation, addition, or repair of why can't I say that word? Municipally? <laughs> municipally owned school facility for the Kittredge Elementary School. Resolved. Having convened in an open meeting on June 10th prior to the SOI submission closing date, the School Committee of North Andover, in accordance with the charter bylaws and ordinances, has voted to authorize the superintendent to submit the Massachusetts School Building Authority the Statement of Interest form dated June 18, 2021 for the Kittredge Elementary School located at 601 Main Street, North Andover, which describes and explains the following deficiencies in the, prior, in the priority categories for which an application may be submitted to the Massachusetts School Building Authority in the future. Priority two, Elimination of existing severe overcrowding as determined in the judgment of the authority specifically to decrease to decrease class size and priority seven replacement of or addition or addition to obsolete buildings in order to provide for a full range of programs consistent with the state and approved local requirements specifically to provide educational spaces that meet the needs of our students and hereby further specifically acknowledges that by submitting this statement of interest form the Massachusetts School Building Authority in no way guarantees the acceptance or the approval of an application the awarding of a grant or any other funding commitment from the Massachusetts School Building Authority or commits the city town regional school district to filing an application for funding with the Massachusetts School Building Authority. Second. So moved by Ms. Petrowski and seconded by Ms. Mabley. Having had no discussion on any of the others, <laughs> the call vote will start with Ms. Witzke Lynch. Yes. Ms. Petrowski. Yes. Mr. McDevitt. Yes. And Ms. Mabley. Yes. And the chair votes yes, so that also carries 5-0 for the MSBA submission for the Kitchen School. Whew. Look, you all take a breath, have a sip of water. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. And uh, while we relax, uh, Dr. Gilligan will give us his superintendent's year-end evaluation evidence. Dr. Gilligan. Thank you, Madam Chair. I appreciate this opportunity. Um, I've 
was thinking about it today and I was thinking that this year seems like it's been 10 years in one. <laughs> um, I, I couldn't imagine uh, thinking back to last summer that it was just last summer. Um, so as you know, the 2021 20, 21 school year has been drastically different for students, parents, and staff at the North End of the Public Schools with the phased in hybrid start to the school year on September 16th, the addition of an online academy, um, which was developed in the last two weeks of the summer um, and finalized, the district temporarily transitioning to uh, full remote learning, back to hybrid, and finally a, a return to full in-person learning this April. Um, so it, it's been quite a year and during normal years, um, you know, when you look at different initiatives, some of these things that we've done this year, four, five, six of these things, are things that typically are one big initiative for the entire year, like the school capacity subcommittee or a new infrastructure for technology or, you know, feeding all the students uh, in the district. So uh, this is not an exhaustive list, although it's probably the longest list out of, uh, that I've ever put forward to the committee. And I will not go through all of the evidence because there's so much here, um, but I do want to take an opportunity to highlight um, some of the things that we have done. And when I say we, I always use the word we because we're a team and that's the parents, staff, students, uh, as, and the leadership team here. I mean, there have been very few vacation days for anyone and everyone's really had to do things differently this year and I'm very appreciative of it. Um, so goal one was addressing the challenges related to COVID-19 and explore, design, implement the school safety protocols and procedures needed for students and staff to s have a successful year. I just think about how far we've come today from where we were last summer and the things that we didn't know, um, but literally uh, scores of hours from all different groups and, uh, spent time doing these things. So creating metrics for opening and transitioning between learning models. Um, if you remember, one of the biggest challenges in Massachusetts was the air quality and HVAC systems. It was brought up in every district. Uh, the ability for uh, us, uh, you know, in Dr. Mailey to secure a top-notch company to actually get in, do that report, uh, and, and say that like we're in good shape and we're passed was remarkable. Um, creating a you know a COVID dashboard this year to keep people updated and be transparent. I know it started out a little clunky, where I sent out a letter every day, where I sent a letter, the principal <laughs> sent a letter, and then we were able to streamline as we went. Um, the parent university. Um, the advisory groups, uh, particularly the parent advisory groups, I mean, they, they are like a professional marketing and information <laughs> firm. Uh, the work that they did, gathering information. Uh, the talk around SEL and all the information that we needed for that. Um, I think we were one of the first school districts in the region, thanks to a lot of working with a lot of folks, uh, to get the staff vaccinated and partner with somebody. Um, and then additionally along the way, you know, just different presentations uh, uh, and information that would get out to people, um, you know, allowing COVID testing for staff if, if they wanted it. Um, and, you know, I would say also, last but not least, what's really important to note is, well, many districts had back orders of PPE. Um, you know, I really, the team here did a really amazing job getting the PPE early uh, and, and having the foresight to do so. Um, I'm gonna move to goal two. The school district's leadership team will provide the necessary leadership support to successfully navigate the challenges of providing a high quality education during the COVID-19 pandemic and prepare for FY22. And um, I, I would point, you know, if you get a chance, and I know there's a lot here, and I know you're, you'll, you'll probably spend a lot of the weekend looking at this, um, the fall reopening plan, if you click on the first page and there's like a dedication to all the people involved, those, there's a, the folks involved just last summer, you'll look at that list and just be amazed at how many people it is from across all the district. Um, but looking at that, um, you know, updates to the, to the, to the committee around um, academics and academic progress, um, curriculum updates, COVID-19 communications. I was thinking the other day in a lot of years, superintendents have sent 10 or 11 newsletters um, they call a snow day here or there, and they probably sent out a few other, you know, communication every, every other week or maybe once or twice a month. Um, it, ongoing across the district, uh, lots of communication. Um, monthly PTO presidents meetings, um, examples of issues of practice, and really staying with, um, you know, some of the things that we've been really good at working on, and that's being reflected in working on these issues of practice. Um, and uh, this one down, if you move a little further down, it talks about negotiated MOAs with the unions, so that's memorandum of agreements. 
I don't know if people remember, but we just finished up the IBB interest-based bargaining process last spring uh, for a new contract, three-year contract moving forward, and that's really special. But uh, I have to say to Helen and Andrew, uh, is the school committee members on this team, along with my team, working with NADA, um, you know, and their leadership, Lisa and Ryan, um, the MOAs with all of the changes, I mean, I don't know how many hours if we added it up, but it was quite a few. Um, and, and to get those done when a lot of districts didn't um, get those types of things done, um, they went the other direction and apart is pretty remarkable. Um, the new high school schedule, um, today you saw in the newsletter, um, the summer programming that came out, it, it, it's unbelievable. And then last but not least, in a normal year, the tiered focus monitoring, which used to be called the coordinated program review, for special education and civil rights. That's the findings letter that, you know, North Andover is in tip top condition, which is um, just remarkable with, you know, Marcy, special education, Ms. Marx's Office of Civil Rights. Um, goal three the school district will support district wide commitment to social justice and equity for all students. And um, if you look at some of the evidence, when I say we're a team, um, you know, you know, you look at the first one, attendance at town commission meetings, uh, participation in subcommittees. Um, you know, that's, you know, Ms. Marks is a member of that commission and our team does that. Uh, our partnership with Boston College around data and data training and data assessments and equity. Um, I've been really impressed with our principals. Um, besides an amazing leadership this year, they've participated in our equity course around courageous conversations about race. And yeah, there's a sample agenda there. Um, the PD information is listed here throughout the Race Amity Club. Um, you know, we had been doing work with DataWise, and you can see the system of data analysis cycles that's ongoing. But I also think, you know, it wasn't in the key actions or benchmarks to start uh, with the goals that we did in the beginning of the year. But every student has a district Chrome is Chromebook, issued Chromebook, excuse me, and um, we provided every family with connectivity that needed it in hotspots. Um, someone I haven't talked about a lot is Erica Murphy and the food services. Uh, like they've been, we've been, I don't know, we're up to 7,200 meals at one point a week last year. Um, and that team's amazing and we'll continue with free lunch this year. And then, you know, I think we were one of the only places locally that provided in-person special education school last summer. Um, and that was remarkable. Um, professional development was goal four and identifying, you know, the recommendations of our program for 2021. Um, to support the social emotional well-being of all staff and enhance best practices within the district and beyond including you know all aspects of the hybrid curriculum um, so when you look through that you can see uh, that we have put together a pd committee which is in process you can see the comprehensive uh, planning for fall winter spring a full day uh, and we did uh, quite extensive annual trainings uh, this year um, with mandatory training um, we had a shared goal uh, the school committee and superintendent I think that's unique and I think important but collaborate with municipal officials to engage residents to ensure appropriate and adequate educational facilities and funding um, in the future to decrease class size and better meet the needs of all students so I think the reading speaks for itself uh, the submission for the MSBA and the work of the subcommittee um, but you know if you go down and look at the end of the year evidence um, I meet every week with the town manager and I think that's special. Um, you know, we have wor really worked well together and are in this for the long game to make a difference um, with our facilities and capital plans uh, along with our operational budgets uh, and, and increasing, you know, the best places for teachers to teach and kids to learn. Um, you know, in here is information about the budgets. We're in the process of finalizing elementary classrooms. Uh, you know, it's a little bit later than normal this year. Um, but we had uh, a lot of changes. We had about 15% start the year in the online academy uh, out of, you know, 4,700 kids or so. And when we returned, we had a little less than 10% remain in remote for the remainder of the year. Um, just the different status updates, you know, out of uh, Dr. Mealy's office. And then, you know, Holly, Jim, the whole subcommittee and the work that's being done there is like absolutely like a massive one year huge project that you guys have done uh, and just really impressive. Um, you know, and there's other information with the subcommittee planning uh, presentations, and there'll be more next time. And then um, there's a school committee goal, and uh, I don't want to speak for the chair, but uh, this is the uh, 
I think this is the first time we've got, kind of gone through this one, and I think the evidence is quite good. So, Madam Chair, if you want to share the evidence, end of cycle evidence. Sure. And that, um, go that goal was seek opportunities to communicate and engage with the community and to advocate for the district with residents and town leadership. So our evidence um, for this cycle included our nightly news articles in every um, nightly news that was sent out that was completed. We had com vir community virtual meetings, one per trimester. The first one was attended by about 26 people, and then we had smaller numbers of folks uh, for the second and third one. Um, and we reported out on those in our school committee meetings. Uh, we participated in the North Andover Tri-Board meeting, which was the first one that we've had in um, a great number of years. Um, it was a good conversation that really set us on our way for the, the capacity subcommittee um, start off, which was, uh, so the Tri-Board meeting was in December and the subcommittee started meeting in January. Um, we attended and participated at FinCom um, and our school committee liaisons and members participated in monthly PTO president's meetings, but then that list goes on and on and on, the CPAC, the BRC, um, you know, many, many activities that our school committee members have participated in. So I think um, in a year where it was difficult to rub elbows in, um, you know, that organic sort of way, we really made an effort uh, to be present with our community in, um, a lot of different ways. Um, we also opened up, it's not in here, but we did also open up um, ways for the public to participate um, with voice um, in public comment virtually. We also had the opportunity for them to participate um, with voice and face um, in our um, public hearings, even though they couldn't be in the room with us. So um, I think that we are all to be commended for, you know, for all of this work. Um, you know, all of us have been in these meetings and reviewing these documents and hearing from Dr. Gilligan um, individually by phone uh, between meetings as a group, um, you know, week by week, meeting by meeting. And um, if we count the number of meetings that we had this year, the number of public comments that we had this year, we certainly um, have spent a lot of hours together, um, be it in person or virtually. So I'm thankful to the committee and to Dr. Gilligan um, for this report. So, um, before we move on to our next um, topic, we will have an opportunity next week when we have done our um, evaluations to um, speak more directly to this. But before we leave this, um, I, if anybody has any specific questions or concerns um, that they'd like to um, address to Dr. Gilligan, I would entertain that now. And I'll start with Ms. witzke lynch No questions. Thank you, Ms. Petrowski. Um, I don't have any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McDevitt. So, just a clarifying question, please. Um, so, Mrs. Zagari is going to send out the Google form for us, um, basically probably tonight, and you would like it uh, by Tuesday midday or so. I'm guessing, right? Yeah, that's the goal. Okay. All right. Thank you, um, Ms. Mabley. I just had actually one question I wanted to ask you, Dr. Gilligan, about, um, I don't remember this before, and I don't know if it's something that's new, which is the, the mentoring program. Oh, it's, um, so it's, it, we've had it for quite some time. You have, it's one of the I've requirements from DESE. Okay. Um, and we usually kick it off with a barbecue here at Central Office with, with the superintendent cooking. Uh, and grilling um, for, the, for the team. But it's, um, it's been a program that started out that we used to, um, I'd probably say years ago, just, you know, not really, you know, would be in basic compliance with the state like a lot of communities. And then we made a real effort under the previous um, assistant superintendent uh, to really get this going. Um, and then there was a big upgrade with the latest assistant superintendent who got a lot of feedback from the teachers about what they need. Um, so we actually have some stipend and positions of mentors uh, across the district and buildings. And um, the mentoring meetings, you know, it was different this year, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's, it's a really kind of cool thing that we have continued to improve. And huge credit to Ms. Marks um, and her team and the work that they helped. Because I did click on the, um, the mentoring sample agenda. I, I just don't remember that before, and I thought it was really great. So I just wanted to ask you if it was something new. But it sounds like it's just an enhancement of what you've already been doing. So that's great. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mabley. And um, I'm gonna steal sharing for just a second, um, if that's all right with you, Dr. Mealy. Of course. 
Okay. Um, I'm just going to share the screen that Dr. Gilligan mentioned in his um, in his remarks. Uh, this is that page um, from the acknowledgments, and you can see here every one of these boxes is filled with the names of people who helped um, get us started and keep us going in North Andover Public Schools um, this year. It's everybody from um, our fire chief to uh, the summer institute teachers to um, the parent advisory working group, um, PTO presidents, the North Andover Teachers Association. So I think that's an impressive list of people working together to make something happen. Thank you, Madam Chair. I forgot to add on that list, school committee should be on that list as well. Um, <laughs> I just want to remind everyone that th 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 like this was for August 10th and we came off the bargaining last year and getting that done. I think we had seven meetings last summer, um, which, is, which is unbelievable. And you know, maybe next time there'll be more people to thank, but it's hard to thank everyone because there's just so many people, you know, from the nurses being contact traces across the entire town to food services, to custodians, to families, to students. Like it, it just, it's unbelievable um, that went into it. And this has really been ongoing since March. And I, I think the most important thing that everyone has to do when they talk about SEL is that's for school committees, that is for administrators, it's for teachers, it's for kids. Like, people have to be able to take a break in order for us to refresh and get better. Um, and I know that I've got more feedback this year than I've ever received um, from <laughs> folks. Um, and I know a lot of superintendents and principals and everyone has. Um, but I hope to use your feedback to, to grow and continue to be reflective. And um, I'm really honored to be the superintendent here in North Andover. Thank you, Dr. Gillian. So our next order of business is new business um, letter F. This is a first reading. I will not be entertaining any motions, <laughs> um, but I will be turning to Dr. Mealy to um, give us the scoop on the student activities accounts. Yeah, so we have to approve these each year. Uh, we review them before we submit them, looking for any inactive accounts that could be taken off, um, or in particular, the class accounts that need to be closed out. Uh, we did follow up with both the class of 2019, which will be closed out um, as they f uh, have decided on their class gift that they want to provide, and the class of 2020 will be closed out um, as the, those funds are being transferred. I actually I signed a check today for that to happen. Uh, and the accounts that do reflect zero uh, activity over the course of the year, there was less activity this year than you'd than you, as you would anticipate. Uh, because of COVID, similar to our revolving accounts. Uh, but I did follow up on those accounts and, and all of the uh, people overseeing those accounts, mostly the principals, uh, indicated that they still need those. Uh, so even though there was no activity, we still need those accounts. All right, so we'll go around and see if there's any questions or comments. Ms. Vitsky Lynch. No. Ms. Petrowski. No, thank you. Mr. McDevitt. Sorry, I couldn't get off mute. No, none at this time. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. And Ms. Mabley. No questions, thank you. Okay, and I don't have any questions at this time either. Thank you, Jim, we appreciate that report. And we are on new business G, the first reading of the annual appointment of the school physician. Um, Dr. Gilligan? So typically, uh, this is the night we have the school physician here with um, uh, Cheryl Bozak, uh, Director of Nursing and Lead Administrator. Um, and as you know, Cheryl's coming to the next meeting uh, to give her presentation. Uh, so he'll have him, we'll have her talk more about Dr. Chan. Um, but uh, at this time, we are looking to have Dr. Chan serve as the school uh, physician consultant uh, for FY22 at uh, $6,300. Um, and we, you know, we did talk about um, you know, Dr. Chan and the value he brings um, here to North Andover. So. Um, in talking with Cheryl, uh, this is the recommendation at this time. Okay. Um, does anybody have any questions about that, or can we wait until Cheryl is here with us? Uh, uh, yep. I do. Yep. Just a quick question. So, um, obviously, Dr. Chan has um, he's been here longer than I've been here, so <laughs> probably at least 10 plus years. What if, if somebody were interested in being uh, the school uh, 
physician, you know, consultant, you know, is there something that they would apply? How, how would somebody go about that? That's a good question, Dr. Gilligan. Is it just assumed that he will be it because there's no process? No, I mean, it's been an annual appointment. Um, so that's a really good question and I'd be happy to get back to you on it. Yeah, and actually we've been very happy with him over the years, so we've just continued it. And, and we don't go through a um, search process each year, but if somebody did want to be considered, they could certainly let us know. I, I think, Mr. McDevitt, um, you know, one of the things this year, um, and we can certainly talk about it with Dr. Chan, but his practice um, did put out a, a memo um, about, um, you know, returning to school. And um, some of us in the Merrimack Valley were surprised that we didn't get a heads up first um, that it was coming out. So, um, you know, I think that we could always improve uh, our ongoing communication. Um, but, you know, he's done a really good service for us over time. Okay. Any other questions or comments? And we'll have an opportunity to talk with Cheryl and Dr. Chan um, next week. And then our last item is the annual review of the wellness policy. Um, I've been serving on the health advisory committee for a number of years now. Um, and we do talk about this policy. There are um, no recommendations for any changes at this point, but we do have um, either a practice or a requirement to have an annual review of the wellness policy. Um, and I think that's probably best to, um, you know, have our, our presentation from Cheryl. I don't think that there's gonna be anything that we're going to need to vote on because there's no changes, but does anybody have any comments or questions that um, we can share? Uh, Dr. Um, Gilligan can share in advance with Cheryl in case we have any questions so she can prepare for next week. Um, Ms. Picard? Yes. Uh, so I did check in with her just because it was a policy. I, I asked Thank Cheryl you. if there was any um, changes that were required and she in turn checked with her full team and with Erica Murphy um, because of the food service as part of wellness as well. And they reported back that they recommended no changes at this time. So I don't, unless we would like to seek out something, I don't see that Cheryl will be coming with any changes next week either. Good. Any, any other questions or concerns um, that we would like Cheryl to address with regards to the wellness policy? Okay, hearing nobody jump in. Um, is that it? Wow, that's our agenda. It's only eight o'clock, somebody should call David Teresi. Um, so we'll have our, we'll have our quick go around and if anybody wants to report out on anything that's been happening in the district or that they've had an opportunity to engage with. Um, and we'll start with Ms. Vitsky Lynch. Uh, nothing tonight. Thank you, Ms. Petrowski. Um, nothing so far, but tomorrow I am taking part in the the eighth grade civics project. So I'm excited to um, be part of that and see how that goes. After, oh, thank you for doing that on the, our behalf. Yeah, after charting the course virtually. Yes. I'm going to jump in on and do that after. <laughs> wow, wow, you're a hero, and you did all that reading tonight, too. You're a great addition to the team. Thank you. <laughs> Um, and we have uh, Mr. McDevitt. Yeah, I, I'd just like to add a quick um, comment, really. You know, the, the past year was really tough uh, for all of our students. And I, I think the senior class, you know, very much in part, um, you know, missed out on an awful lot of things. But um, by all accounts that I've heard, I think that they had a great uh, last week. They had a ton of senior activities they were able to do. Um, prom, you know, there were some virtual things, but they, you know, had uh, great events up at the Stevens Estate. Um, you know, we had a, an absolutely amazing graduation, um, the parade, you know, all of those things. And so I, I just really want to echo how proud I think so many people in the community are of them uh, and being so noble in, in kind of ending their, their last year at North Andover High. And they know that it was really difficult for so many of them, but uh, how proud we are of, of all of them. And uh, I'm glad that they got to have as many fun activities at the end of the year that they were able to have, even if they weren't, uh, you know, all throughout the year and in person, but, uh, but it was great. Good to see. Thank you very much, Andrew and Ms. Mabley. I echo that wholeheartedly. And I also, this is a little bit different, but I wanted to comment. I don't know how many people who travel down Main Street when they go to NAMS or go here or whatever, but um, 
after living here for 22 years, I'm extremely excited that they're putting in sidewalks yes. between the library and Third Street. Yes. And um, because I've watched for many years kids walk from the middle school, from Thompson, Atkinson, down to town, to the library, what have you, and having to cross the street, cross back, yep. it's spectacular. So um, it's a totally different thing, and it's more a municipal thing, but I just wanted to note that's a huge benefit to our, our students, and I'm so excited that it's almost done. Terrific. Thank you, Ms. Mabley. Um, I, I, I echo um, what um, Mr. McDevitt said about Senior Week. It was really great. I enjoyed the online things. I enjoyed the in-person things. I thought that the speeches at graduation were, um, what I love to say, short and solid. Like, they really had something to say, and they said it well. Um, so really thankful for that. Um, thankful that everybody on this committee was able to come. Thankful for so many um, prior school committee um, members to be able to give um, diplomas to their own children and um, a number of faculty and staff that were able to do so as well. Um, last Saturday, I finished up the Hidden Histories course um, that was led by Brian Sheehy that was um, requested and practically demanded by North Andover High School students um, from the Race Amity Club. Um, it was a three course um, series. The first one was on um, Irish and Latinx immigration in the city of Lawrence. Um, the second one was African American experiences in Essex County. And the third one was indigenous um, experiences in Massachusetts, which is a Wampanoag word. Um, and I can't remember what it means, but I did learn. Um, so I guess I need to revisit that. But um, really, it was terrific. And it was attended by educators from um, from all over the state, and in fact, from several other states as well. And some of our um, administrators, I know um, Ms. Marks was uh, there at some of them, Ms. Ando was there for some of them. So um, it's just really exciting, um, the work that's being done um, because of student voice and because of the initiatives of, um, of North Andover educators and all that in a in a COVID year. So um, having no other business at this time, um, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> <laughs> so I believe that was moved by Ms. Mabley and seconded by Ms. Vitsky Lynch as well as Mr. McDevitt. Um, and we'll have a roll call vote starting with Ms. Lynch. Yes. Ms. Petrowski? Yes. Mr. McDevitt? Yes. Uh, Ms. Mabley? Yes. And the chair votes yes. It is 8.08 .08 on 6-10-2021, and this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>